Celeste here, and I'm here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now, as a longtime resident of Kenosha and Kenosha counties of Wisconsin, I ran across the term Murder Alley recently, and I was intrigued because for as long as I've lived in this area, I have never heard of Murder Alley. So I looked into it, and it refers to this unpaved area of land running south from 64th Street in Kenosha on between 20th and 21st Avenues. And I really wanted to learn more about it. Why is it called Murder Alley? Why have I not heard of this before? So it was nicknamed Murder Alley because there were seven homicides that happened here between 1967 and 1981. Three of the cases have since been solved and were determined to have been unrelated to each other. In 1981, Coroner Thomas Dorff likened the area to a Bermuda Triangle of Murder in an interview with the press. Kenosha Police Department Lieutenant Rudy Blotz also said that the alley had a jinx or something. Everyone agreed that there was definitely something going on for this spot to have such an unusual concentration of murders. The first murder took place on February 9, 1967, when 17-year-old Mary Kaldenberg left her house on 64th Street to go buy a soda from the corner drugstore, and her body was found four days later in the back of a 1948 hearse a mile from her house. She was fully clothed except for her shoes, which were removed and placed near her, and she had been stabbed 12 times in the neck, chest, forehead, and back. This case remains unsolved to this day. On January 30th, 1978, Gerald Burnett, a 52-year-old Kenosha resident, was found in a snowbank near his home at the Mouthy Alley. He had been beaten to death with a tire iron and police consider it a robbery. There was a conviction in this case. On May 27th, 1979, 80-year-old Herman Bosman's home was burned and he was found beaten to death inside it. The case is still unsolved. And police are thinking that whoever perpetrated this tried to burn down the house to get rid of the evidence of murder, but clearly it didn't work. In, on June 23rd of the same year, 18-year-old Alice Elsner was found buried in a rose garden. There was also an arrest and conviction in this case. Finally, ending the deadly streak on January 26, 1981, police were called to the site of a triple homicide where Alice Eaton, John Amon, and Raphael Petrucci, Petrucci, I'm butchering it, I'm sure, were found dead in Alice Eaton's home which boarded the alley. Eventually, Alice's grandson, Robert McRoberts, was charged with the murder and convicted. The ones that have been solved appear to be completely unrelated to each other, so what is it about this alley that had so many murders over a relatively short span of time? Well, in trying to research the case, and there really isn't much about this out there, I could barely find anything. So I did find one blog post that had an interesting supposition. In a poorly written post, rife with misspellings, the blog postulated that the murderer was, in fact, Quentin Tarantino. Yes, famed film director Quentin Tarantino. The author of this post believed that Tarantino is a sick, sadistic individual whose fantasies of murder finally came to light. Yeah, and apparently all of them were Tarantino. Um, okay. This guy also referred to one of the victims as a geriatric jackass and doesn't give a single shred of evidence or a plausible connection between Tarantino and the Kenosha murders, but there you go. So what do you think? Was this an unlucky coincidence? Is the area jinxed or cursed? Did Quentin Tarantino go on a murder spree? I'd love to hear your thoughts. is what it looks like driving through the alley. So you can see there's houses on both sides. And it's kind of a long stretch. But I don't know the exact locations of where anything specifically happened and it was a long time ago. I'm sure everything's changed. But this is Murder Alley in Kenosha.